Hi, it's Dr. Centeno, and let's talk about QRD compression and really any posterior injection procedure. Uh, we can also talk about it in the context of a PICL. So if we start with the concept of QRD compression, the idea is that there's a chunk taken out of the back of the skull uh, and usually a piece taken out of the atlas. Now, the atlas is a ring-shaped bone, so if you're going to take a piece out of the back of the atlas, or C1, it's now going to look like a, a horseshoe with an opening towards the back. So the first thing is, in any posterior injections, in someone who has had QRD compression, those tend to be higher risk than someone who hasn't. Now, why would that be? That's simply because there's no bony uh, safety zone, if you will, that protects the back of the brain there and that protects the back of the upper spinal cord that has been removed. Uh, now, there are things that you can do to try to compensate for that. And you can use x-ray guidance, ultrasound guidance, etc. But it's still going to be higher risk for those patients who have had a QRED compression. And on the PICL front, since we're coming from the front to do a PICL, there really isn't that much additional risk there, but certainly there's the concept that since parts and pieces have been removed that can impact stability, like the small muscles there, rectus capitis posterior minor, that patients with QRD compression might not respond as robustly if they get something like a PICL procedure. Hey, get this out to more patients by like, comment, share, subscribe. Thanks so much.